This is my guest star, Nola. Uh, do you have anything to say? Nothing to comment on just yet. Um, we, we will uh, get check in with her later. Mm. Mm-hmm. I agree too. Um, so today I want to take this opportunity for um, this video essay for core class to talk about my favorite topic to hate on, uh, kitsch media. Um, kitsch is often just talked about in the terms of literature and painting, but I want to extend this to other forms such as film and especially social media. Kitsch kind of really got popularized with the Clement Greenberg essay um, published in 1939, um, Avant-Garde versus Kitsch, where he kind of like really set in stone what kitsch is, um, which, uh, this is a quote saying, uh, referring to the, the Russian painter Repin. Yes, mm-hmm. Um, pre-digested art for the spectator and spare him the effort provides him with a shortcut to the pleasure of art that detours what is necessarily difficult for genuine art. I, I think this applies to Repin, but also to a lot of other media, especially media we see today. A lot of contemporary media, a lot of shit you see online. Um, some good examples of kitsch media are, like Repin, um, Norman Walk Rockwell uh, and his, especially his um, Saturday Post uh, paintings, and I was obsessed with these paintings as a child, but these have no deeper meaning in the sense that what you see is what you get. Um, a very famous, well-hated painter is um, Thomas Kincaid, and this man I love to absolutely hate. Him and Jeff Koons are the artists I hate the absolute most. Thomas Kincaid was born in the 50s, so he's a boomer. Um, I think it's like 53 or something. Um, I started hating on Thomas Kincaid when I first saw the Solar Sands video. I love that that person. I love that person. Um, it just filled me with a pure rage for this um, conservative man who uses art as a platform to push this narrative of a simplified world view and push his Christianity conservative views. But yeah, this quote that Clement Greenberg states really applies to Kincaid. It's, there's no deeper meaning behind these paintings. It, he runs his galleries like franchises and have, have pushed these owners to buy excessive amounts of product which they don't end up selling and then have pushed them into bankruptcy and he lost two lawsuits having to pay like a fuck ton of money it's this much um it, it's like cheap printed canvases like shit you buy at walmart his work is so unoriginal i remember trying to do research for my art history class which really helped me get a lot of the information for this um and i tried looking up a painting my professor mentioned and i literally could not find it you know why because there's a million that look exactly the fucking same it, it's like that and then there's also he collabed with like walt disney which like is the master of kitsch like they have some good stuff like fantasia i absolutely love fantasia there's also like, I don't know, Lilo and Stitch. That's another really good one. But yeah, Kincaid just paints to make money. He paints, and that shows the way he marketed. He markets his artwork. That you can, you can't really buy an original. You buy a reproduction for a much lower cost, and then you can pay an extra to have a painter in in his franchise run gallery to add some unique touches, some little touch-ups, so it looks like a real painting. It's, it looks like these shit you see in Walmart that like the canvas, it, it, it's painted on the side, or like the shit you get at Walgreens of your like baby. It's just printed on there, on the canvas. It's not actually painted, so it's, 
it's much cheaper looking. And then you can buy like pillows, you can buy blankets, you can buy snow globes, sculptures, you can buy all of this dumb, ugly shit. And you have seen a Kincaid, you just don't know it's a Kincaid. Like you've seen this in your grandma, in your neighbor's grandmothers, in your grandma neighbors. You're like, kitsch that's interesting to look at is kitsch literature. This kind of popped up it um kind of before painting kitsch kind of took a stand as you know education became more widespread literacy rates went up thus there are more people looking to read and these publishers wanted to make more money thus they published you know books that took a short amount of time to write because they took low effort they're you know they're not they're not a, a Novikov they're not a, a Atwood like it, it's any of you've seen these books you've seen them in libraries and bookshops and especially used bookshops they're um, romance novels with a sexy white guy muscly on top uh, or damsel in distress those Amish books um, Cowboy, sexy cowboy, uh, and then there's those science fiction books that have like weird demon on the cover, um, or those horror, horror novels. Um, they really don't say anything. They're interesting. They're a great escape. I mean, it's not. Some of it's bad literature. Often those romance novels are heteronormative, cisnormative, only include white people, like. Like, it's much harder to enjoy a Novikov when, like, you need an escape than it is to enjoy Twilight, which, you know, has no character development. It doesn't really, you know, challenge your worldview. It has only white people in it and Jacob. I l love reading Twilight when I'm depressed. and But that brings me to another thing of why I think um especially lower class people enjoy kitsch media it's because a lower class people the proletariat often struggle in their daily lives to get by thus you're not going to go looking for um media that's going to change your life or try to push try to you know give you a different world view something that's challenging you or something that's ugly or horrific or like you're gonna want you're gonna want something that brings you comfort like a Kincaid painting that's you know a glowy cottage oh I would like to live there oh that's so calming to look at Twilight you know something that's interesting or these romance novels something you can escape to and escape into it's hard to read you know a Morrison book or a Novikov book when you're struggling to get food on the table for your kids you're gonna want to wind down, relax, and read a shitty ca sexy cowboy book because that's calming. That's why, you know, rich people with also with access to education, you know, prefer avant-garde and, and um, you know, con more contemporary work. Contemporary kitsch as well, which I think is very interesting. So you can find this so easily on you know like instagram explore page specifically the explore page um it's always a hyper realistic portrait of a celebrity um usually billy eilish ariana grande or like megan the stallion um and then it's like hyper realistic lips on brown paper in color pencil faceless portrait being commissioned on Etsy for way too much money for it being faceless and you know just outlined of a picture. And not all kitsch is bad. There's worse kitsch than others. Some kitsch is relatively harmless although it treats a viewer as a, a fucking idiot and I know everyone out there is better than you know a media treating you like a fucking idiot. You know what media is good at treating like you like an idiot? Um, shows for infants and children's shows. And you know what? Those shows are still fucking great. I still regularly watch Fraggle Rock. Regularly. Blue's Clues? All the time. Kipper? Is the best show ever created. 10 out of 10. But, you know, in conclusion, right? Exper
Experiment. Make shitty art. I make shitty art every day. I make some good things, but mainly it's pretty shitty art. You have to make shitty art to make good art. Now, in conclusion, I fucking hate Jeff Koons and Thomas Kincaid.